This thing is already beginning to rust. The disadvantage of this hook is, besides it already being permanent, it just has this, this little piece of bent sheet metal that's supposedly supposed to hold a vehicle. You know, if this fails, I don't, I don't wanna have to rely on this. So that's why we have this closed link system. It goes on with this, there's a snap ring, and I'll show you guys how to install this. Pretty easy, but we're gonna go ahead and cut this off. So not only does this look way better, considering that it lays flat, um, it's anodized aluminum, so it's not going to rust, but the closed pin system, so you can put a D-ring through this when it's extended, and the D-ring will go around your tree saver or um, whatever else means you have to tow. It just makes it a whole lot cleaner install. I think it looks a lot sharper, and it's just safer in general because, you know, hooks can fail. And I'm sure this has a failure point too, but because it's closed all the way around, it says max load is uh, 16,000 pounds for this thing, so. But it looks a lot better laying flat like that. Hey guys, we're back. So we kind of ran into an issue. I was driving the Bronco and it just died on me. So, time to troubleshoot. So one of my first ideas, at first I thought I wasn't getting any spark because when I was trying to crank it over, my batteries are good. I'll give you an example here. But first thing you'll notice is that when I put the key in the ignition, when I turn it to the on position, there's a noise you're supposed to hear that you don't hear. Just turns on. What we didn't hear there was the fuel pump turning on. But put it on and try to start it. Nothing. One of the first things you can check on these old Fords is the fuel pump inertia switch. What happens when you crash a vehicle, especially an older one like this, they'll have a switch that cuts off the fuel pump so it's not pumping gas after you get into a car accident. Now we have to troubleshoot and check all the fuses and stuff, so we're gonna do that now. So the fuse for the, fuse, the fuel pump relay on this has power. I swapped over the relays, you know, swapped them around, they're all the same on this one. It still won't start. So, tells me the fuel pump is bad. Fuel pump inertia switch is fine, hasn't been triggered. Looks like we gotta change the fuel pump. So I'm gonna try one more thing. So I just have a jumper, I have a jumper lead to power. This is just a test light that's grounded out and you can see that I can get power to this. If you look at the fuse diagram on one of these, we're gonna put it to power to see if the fuel pump will kick on. I still haven't heard the fuel pump. I'm running power directly through the power port on the relay, and still nothing. All right, looks like it's a fuel pump. So I got the fuel pump. Comes with everything you need, I guess. So, um, looks like it's just a fuel pump, some wire cramps, seal, and then a filter that comes with it. So the Bronco's in the driveway. I could bump it in here with the starter into the garage, but I'll just do it in the driveway, but I'm trying to do this before the imminent rain. So we're 
gonna check one more thing before I drop the entire fuel tank. I'm gonna check to see if I'm getting voltage to the power wire that goes to the in-tank fuel pump. Sorry, there's a plane flying overhead. I'm gonna check to see if I'm getting power first. So I checked, I used the multimeter and I unplugged the fuel pump and I checked to see if there was voltage there. When I checked, it was it said 12 volts and then it was going away and then eight volts going away, 12 volts. My batteries are still good. So what I did was I made some jumper wires that I just connected to the battery. Don't necessarily want to do that, but I just did that just to test it. So what I did was I hooked the wires up to the battery directly and ran it all the way back to the fuel pump and I, I touched it to the hot and ground on the, on the fuel pump and it made a noise. So it leads me to believe that the fuel pump is fine. It's weird because I've driven this truck all over the country and I've never had an issue and all of a sudden it just died. So I took the connection to see and with the key on if it got power and it was inconsistent. So I took some electronics cleaner. It's kind of like brake clean for electronics and I sprayed it out and we're gonna see if it'll start and stay running. Hear that noise? That's the noise we want to hear. I'm so glad that I checked that connection before I dropped that tank because I was I had the fuel pump and everything ready and that's why it's important to double triple check everything. I am so glad that I did not drop that fuel tank. I was I was pretty close. I bought the fuel pump and I just thought, you know, let me just test the connection before I do that. So it was spotty with the 12 volts and all I did was just spray a little cleaner, electronic cleaner on there and connected it and fires right up. Yeah.